We help quite a few people retire before the age of 65, and many times health insurance costs are one of their biggest concerns, and rightfully so, because you and I both know that, or at least we can imagine how pricey it might be for us to, to pay for health insurance before we get to that Medicare age of 65. But with a little bit of planning and preparing your retirement accounts and your withdrawal plan in a certain way, you might be able to reduce how much you can pay for health insurance. Really, this could end up saving you thousands of dollars a year. So today I'm gonna to go over three ways or three things that you might be able to do to minimize your health insurance costs if you're thinking about retiring before age 65. But first, if I haven't met you yet, I'm Dave Zoller and I run a wealth management firm named Streamline Financial along with Tim and Luke and Sean. And we create these videos to hopefully help you and, and people like you who are thinking about retirement. So if you like retirement planning specific videos, please like and subscribe so that you don't miss the next one. So when it comes to health insurance in your late 50s or early 60s, we have a few options. Number one is you can keep working part time or half time or whatever it, it takes to keep your benefits at work. Many people don't want to do that. So they either have the option of picking up and purchasing a private health insurance plan, which could be pretty pricey or they might be eligible for government subsidies. And just to be clear, we're not health insurance experts at Streamline, we know enough, but we are very good at designing retirement income plans that are sustainable and have a high chance of success. And we just wanna share with you what others are doing, what some clients are doing, some people similar to you, so that maybe it'll be helpful for you. And one thing that other retirees are doing, they're preparing their accounts so that they can design their taxable income in a way where they qualify for some of these government subsidies. And now one important thing is I said taxable income because the subsidies are based on your adjusted gross income on your tax return. And there are some accounts that you're gonna use in retirement that don't increase your taxable income. Just to get an idea of the AGI limits, it ranges to how many people you have in your household. Most likely, I'm guessing it's gonna be one or two people. So the taxable income limits are gonna be close to 51K or $51,000 for single, and then close to $68,000 for two people. And you'll wanna really take a look at the exact numbers based on what year it is, because they may change from time to time. Now, you might be thinking when you hear those numbers, where well, I'm, I'm gonna need a lot more than that to live, but don't worry, you can create a withdrawal plan that gives you a lot more than that each year. And you can still possibly qualify for the, the insurance subsidies. So it all comes down to your withdrawal plan and then the types of accounts that you're gonna use. It just takes a little preparation. And as planners, one of our favorite things to, to say is it's better to prepare than to repair. So onto the three ways that retirees might be able to lower their health insurance costs. Number one is potentially delaying social security. You and I both know that the social security benefit is determined by the age that you started and the number of years you've worked and how much you've, you've paid into the system. And we have the option to either start it some, somewhere between usually 62 to 70. And if you're under 65, and thinking about starting social security because you, you know that you're done earning a wage from work, just know that your social security can be counted towards your total income, that AGI number. And some people have, have seen that delaying their social security income until at least age 65 or a little bit later, that's allowed them to get larger subsidies for, for health insurance costs to help assist with that. Another potential benefit of delaying is that your social security benefit might go up every year. Usually it does go up every year. You might be thinking, well, I need that income to live if I'm not gonna be working. So that's where point number three is gonna come in. But as for point number two, think about minimizing withdrawal, withdrawals from pre-tax retirement accounts. Now withdrawals from your 401ks and, and IRAs and other similar pre-tax accounts, in addition to social security, are factored into that income that determines the amount of healthcare assistance you might get. So taking all of your income from pre-tax accounts could increase your taxable income above those income limits that I mentioned. And one strategy we've seen others do in the, in the years leading up to their retirement date is they start to increase their non-retirement accounts, either their liquid savings accounts or individual investment accounts. And they do this with the expectation that they're gonna use those funds the first few years of retirement up until that age 65 when Medicare kicks in. This is actually point number three, which is to potentially start to increase your liquid savings and non-retirement accounts. This could work because the money that you withdraw from your, your individual accounts, your non-retirement accounts, or maybe trust your living trust accounts, or just liquid savings accounts are not treated like an IRA or 401k, where the IRA and 401k, everything you take out is taxable income to you. 
really these, these liquid accounts are treated completely different as you already, I'm sure, are, are aware. If you're thinking about this strategy though, one thing to pay attention to is the potential dividends and interest and capital gains that can be incurred within the non-retirement accounts. If you happen to have a big capital gain, a, a sale that, that, uh, that gives you a capital gain, taxable capital gain, can count as taxable income and increase your AGI, which is that number that determines the health insurance assistance that you might get. So there's a few things to think about as you're doing this. Hopefully this video gives you just a brief intro to income planning related to retiring before age 65. The healthcare cost issue has been a common concern for people that we talk to, but hopefully with a little bit of planning, you can feel better about the decisions that you're gonna make and how you're gonna pay for it. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe, and then I'll see you in the next video. Take care.